So let's talk about New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, former President Donald Trump, and the concept of equal justice. Because if it ain't equal, it ain't justice. And justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So the Department of Justice, specifically the U.S. Attorney's Office in Brooklyn, New York, is apparently opening an investigation into New York Governor Andrew Cuomo for the way he handled the pandemic, specifically the way he handled COVID deaths in nursing homes. I saw an interview yesterday morning with a New York assemblyman named Ron Kim, and here is how Politico reported out some of the allegations by Assemblyman Kim. Ron Kim, a New York State Assemblyman who said Governor Andrew Cuomo covered up information about COVID-19 deaths in nursing homes, said Cuomo called him multiple times asking him to lie and saying his career would be destroyed for speaking out. Kim, a fellow Democrat, said Cuomo called him four times and Cuomo's staff called him about five times after that, saying Kim needed to immediately release a statement contradicting earlier statements about Cuomo's alleged cover-up. Here's a quote from Assemblyman Kim. Quote, Governor Cuomo called me the next day at 8 p.m. while I was about to bathe my kids. I was with my wife, Kim said in an interview on MSNBC Thursday morning. And for 10 minutes, Cuomo berated me. He yelled at me. He told me that my career would be over. He's been biting his tongue for months against me. And I had tonight, not tomorrow, tonight, to issue a new statement, essentially asking me to lie. Cuomo's office released a statement from an advisor to the governor who was with Cuomo for the call, which said Kim was lying about the call. So this has already gotten ugly. Uh, Andrew Cuomo, Democrat, calling Assemblyman Kim, Democrat, a liar. Kim calling Cuomo a liar. But as ugly as it might be, this must be investigated, right? Criminal politicians need to be held accountable, you know, without regard to politics. It's not a partisan endeavor. Equal justice is equal justice. Crime is crime. Corruption is corruption. And you know, there is no federal law, there is no criminal statute that comes with a caveat, apply only to Republicans or apply only to Democrats. The Department of Justice, the Brooklyn U.S. Attorney's Office can and should investigate these allegations, provided there's what we call adequate predication. Fancy term for enough information, enough evidence to open a criminal probe. But when this story broke yesterday, I couldn't help but think of another criminal investigation in New York. Can anybody tell me what in the world is going on with the campaign finance crimes Donald Trump committed together with Michael Cohen? I mean, Michael Cohen has been charged, convicted, sentenced, and imprisoned, and he is now out after having served his sentence, and Donald Trump has not even been charged yet. And let's face it, those crimes those campaign finance crimes and the conspiracy to commit those campaign finance crimes, a conspiracy that included Donald Trump, Michael Cohen, and perhaps others, those crimes were committed by Michael Cohen with Donald Trump, at the direction of Donald Trump, and for the benefit of Donald Trump. So the reason I'm bringing this up now this Donald Trump, Michael Cohen conspiracy to violate the campaign finance laws back in 2016 
is because of a little something called the statute of limitations. What is the statute of limitations? Well, it is the deadline for the time where prosecutors get to bring criminal charges. For example, campaign finance crimes and conspiracies, you have five years from the, the date the crime is committed, you have five years to bring charges. If you bring charges five years in a day after those crimes are committed, the law says you're out of luck. You've timed out. You can't bring those criminal charges. So the campaign finance crimes and the conspiracy occurred back in 2016. Okay, I'm no mathematician, but I can count. We got 2016 to 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and here we are in 2021, five years later. And folks, Michael Cohen is the small fish in this conspiracy, in these campaign finance crimes. Are we really going to let the big fish just swim free in the warm waters of Florida? When these crimes committed by Donald Trump and Michael Cohen were designed to bury from the American people deeply damaging information about Donald Trump's relationship with Stormy Daniels. It was to buy her silence. Why? So he could deceive the American people in the run-up to the 2016 election. This is just another way he tried to steal the election from the U.S. voters. So here's the good news about the statute of limitations. Even though the clock is running, right? Prosecutors have five years to bring charges. There's still time. Why do I say there's still time? Because when it comes to the statute of limitations, it doesn't begin to run until the last conspiratorial act is committed. And what did we learn from Michael Cohen is his, in his congressional testimony? Donald Trump was still writing checks to Michael Cohen to reimburse Michael Cohen for the hush money that Michael Cohen laid out as part of this criminal scheme. And Donald Trump was writing those checks as late as August 1st of 2017. And think about that. Donald Trump is continuing to engage in these conspiratorial acts from the White House as president, writing these reimbursement checks to Michael Cohen as Michael Cohen produced to Congress. $35,000 payment from Donald Trump to Michael Cohen by check on August 1st, 2017. So the good news is the statute of limitations clock is running, but we still have some time. You know, but please, Department of Justice, please, U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, do not let justice time out because justice matters. It matters. And as always, folks, thank you for watching these daily videos. Can I make one quick ask? Um, Team Justice, which lives over on Patreon, patreon.com, where you can go and more formally support our all-volunteer efforts and our content, uh, Team Justice has put together a letter to all 50 state attorneys general urging them to open investigations into avoidable, preventable coronavirus deaths that occurred at the hands of Trump and company. And if you go to Twitter, my pinned tweet at the very top of my timeline is that letter, that draft letter, and a link where you can sign it. And we've got something like 15,000 signatures over the last few days and growing. We have signatories from all 50 states. So if you would consider reading that letter and if you're moved by it, adding your signature because in the coming weeks we will close it out and we will send it to all 50 state attorneys general and others. So again, that's over on Twitter and it is the pinned tweet, the top of my timeline on Twitter. It's Glenn Kirshner too. And of course, if you choose to go over to patreon.com and become a Team Justice member, you don't need to, to sign the letter. But if you choose to, then I'll send you some Team Justice stickers and a personal handwritten note of thanks. 
Um, but one way or another, folks, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.